In the name of Jesus Christ, our crucified, risen, ascended Lord, our only Savior. Amen. The word of God for our consideration this morning is taken from the, Paul's letter to the Romans, chapter 9, beginning with the first verse. I speak the truth in Christ. I am not lying. My conscience confirms it through the Holy Spirit. I have great sorrow and unceasing anguish in my heart. For I could wish that I myself were cursed and cut off from Christ for the sake of my people, those of my own race, the people of Israel. Theirs is the adoption to sonship. Theirs the divine glory, the covenants, the receiving of the law, the temple worship, and the promises. Theirs are the patriarchs, and from them is traced the human ancestry of the Messiah, who is God over all, forever praised. Amen. It's not as though God's word had failed. For not all who are descended from Israel are Israel. Nor because they are his descendants are they all Abraham's children. On the contrary, it is through Isaac that your offspring will be reckoned. In other words, it is not the children by physical descent who are God's children, but it is the children of the promise who are regarded as Abraham's offspring. For this is how the promise was stated. At the appointed time, I will return, and Sarah will have a son. This is the word of the Lord. Dear brothers and sisters in Christ, family reunions are kind of a cool thing if you've ever been able to participate in them. For some families, they're a little bit bigger deal than other families. For example, if your father is an only child and your mother has one brother and no sisters, you guys could get together for one weekend and call it a family reunion. My family, a couple years back, had the opportunity to get together the Schrader side of my family for a family reunion. And it was kind of a neat thing because we had probably about half the people there, three generations, and that amounted to about 60 people. That was only half of them. You could spend that time reminiscing about things that went on growing up, sharing a few laughs, having the opportunity to meet first cousins once removed, or introducing second cousins to one another, meeting spouses that you may have never met in person before. And of course, like many family reunions, we got the t-shirts that showed that these people are all part of the same family. And if you saw someone wearing this family reunion t-shirt, you could see on the front that they were a proud member of Schrader Nation. Well, family reunions are great. But today we're going to talk about a different family we're a part of. You probably don't have a t-shirt of it from a family reunion, but God has made you a part of it. It's his family. As we study God's word together today, we see that we are part of the family. The Apostle Paul was a Jew. And God called him to be the apostle to the Gentiles. So he, his job was to go to people who were not from the nation of Israel and preach to them. And for that reason, many people began to accuse him of kind of being an anti-Semite saying he had neglected his own countrymen by going to these, these Gentiles instead of the Jews. But the problem was they didn't know Paul well enough to make that accusation. Because Paul would always go to the Jews first. He would preach to them. He would share with them the message of Jesus. But by and large, those people rejected him. They rejected the message that he preached. No, Paul wanted nothing better than his own countrymen to hear the good news about Jesus and to be part of the family of God. But they were not willing. They would not listen. He says, I have great sorrow and unceasing anguish in my heart. For I could wish myself were, I myself were cursed and cut off from Christ for the sake of my people, those of my own race, the people of Israel. Paul had such love for his own countrymen that he said, I am willing to forfeit my place in salvation, if that were possible, in order for these people to be saved. I'm willing to trade places with them and take their sentence of condemnation 
if God would allow that, which of course that's not how it works. Can you relate to Paul? Have you ever been there yourself? You know who Jesus is. You know he's your savior. You know he's lived perfectly for you. You know that he's purchased heaven for you. But do you have that loved one who doesn't know him? Have you thought to yourself, you know, whether it's my spouse, my son, my daughter, my mother, whoever it may be, I would gladly trade places with that person. Have, give up my spot of salvation for that person to be in heaven. Well, that's where Paul was. He wanted his countrymen in heaven. That was so important to him. But they had rejected God's word. And these people were really without excuse because they had all the advantages in the world in order to be close to God. He says, theirs is the adoption to sonship. Theirs the divine glory, the covenants, the receiving of the law, the temple worship, and the promises. Theirs are the patriarchs, and from them is traced the human ancestry of the Messiah, who is God over all, forever praised. Amen. Out of all the nations of the earth, Israel enjoyed that adoption to sonship. God had chosen that nation and said, you're going to be my people. They had the divine glory. If you think back to when God led his people out of Egypt, do you remember how he led them? There was that pillar of fire and that pillar of cloud that would go before them. The glory of the Lord filled the tabernacle, filled the temple. They had that. They saw that. They had no excuse not to know who God was. They had the covenants. God made a covenant with Abraham and Isaac and Jacob and David and others to say, you're going to be my people. And they squandered that. They had the giving of the law. And that was something they were so proud of. Remember at Mount Sinai, the thundering and the lightning? God gave his commands, the Ten Commandments to the people. They said, we are God's people. We have those commandments. And at that same time, he gave them the prescription of how it is that they were to worship him. This is how you are to approach me. This is how you are to come before me. They had the promises, God's protection, the promised land, God's providence. And they had something else very special. He says, out of all the nations of the earth, the nation of Israel is the only one that God allowed himself to be connected to their ancestry, to be a part of their family as they carried the human line of the Savior. And so you look at it and say, these people had all of these advantages and yet they still rejected God. They still wouldn't listen. They still did not want to be a part of his people. Even though Israel prided herself on all this. They said, look at all these things that we have. We have to be God's people. We have all of these things. We are God's people. But do we ever do the same thing? Do we ever look at our family connections? Do we ever look at our bloodlines or at our church membership and say, look at how we have the same advantages of Israel? Do we ever look at those things and say, look at the connections that we have to God and his church so that we must be his people. Look at our bloodlines. Look at our family membership, our church memberships. Someone might even say, oh yeah, are you a Christian? Well, of course. For five generations my family has been going to this church. My father and mother were founding members of this church. My dad's on the church council. My mom volunteers for Sunday school and all sorts of other things. So, of course, that's my connection. That's what makes me a part of God's family. But as we study God's word today, we see it's not according to the flesh. It's not according to the bloodlines. It's not who you know on a human standing that gets you into heaven. Because with all of these, you have to ask yourself, what good does that faith do for me? What good does looking at all of my family members who have gone before me, who have been faithful to God, who have been Christians, what good does their faith do for me? 
It's not something that once the family has it, it gets passed on. It's not like a genetic thing where you say, well, mom and dad had blue eyes, and so of course I'll have blue eyes. Mom and dad had faith, so of course I'll have faith. Mom and dad have their way into heaven, so of course I'll have my way into heaven. It doesn't work that way. We can't share our salvation with someone else and say, because I have it, it's now yours. Paul said, not all who are descended from Israel are Israel. Even though all those people could claim Abraham as their forefather and say, look at all the advantages we had. We had the worship, the commandments, the glory of God, the line of the Savior, that didn't automatically get them into heaven. No. These people didn't, couldn't look at these things and say, because we have the family members, because we have the bloodline, because of our church membership, now we have our free ticket into heaven. It doesn't work that way. And if we think that that's the way we're going to get into heaven, we're changing the way that God has said we go into heaven. Think back to the gospel for today where he talked about this narrow door. There is only one way. And if we're not going through that, we're not part of the family of God and we're not going to be a part of that eternal family reunion. When you think about becoming a part of someone's family, there are really limited ways, aren't there? I can be born into that family. I can be adopted into that family. I can marry into that family. But outside of that, I can't simply give you a, a t-shirt from my family reunion and say, now you're a member of my family. You can masquerade as that, but it doesn't make it so. And so when it comes to being part of the family of God, he says there really is only one way. But even though you want to trace the bloodlines, that's not what gets it done. That's not what makes you a part of the family of God. Listen to what Paul says. It is through Isaac that your offspring will be reckoned. In other words... It is not the children by physical descent who are God's children, but is the children of the promise who are regarded as Abraham's offspring. For this is how the promise was stated. At the time when I will return and Sarah will have a son. Do you remember Abraham and Sarah? They were old. They were both approaching 100. Children were not in their future. But God said, I'm going to give you one. Abraham and Sarah weren't content to let God fulfill his promise. They started to meddle. They had Abraham father a child by a servant. Saying, well now at least he has an heir according to the flesh. But God says that's not how it works. It's not according to the plan. It's not according to the promise. God would step in to give them that child according to the promise. He would perform a miracle allowing Sarah to conceive and have a child even in her old age. But God said, this is the child that's going to carry the line of the Savior. And Isaac and his descendants continued to carry that line of the Savior until Jesus was born. And it was going to be faith in that promise that brought a person to eternal life. So are you part of the family? Are you a part of God's family? Well, you might say, well, it's easy, isn't it? Member of Living Hope, of course I'm part of the family. Or you might say, I go to California Lutheran High School, go to church on a regular basis, that makes me a part of the family. But it's not bloodlines, it's not church membership, it's not being a part of a student body that is Lutheran, that makes you a part of the family. If we do that, if we look to that as the way to show that we are part of God's family, we're doing the same thing as Abraham and Sarah. We're meddling with the way that God works and try to make it different than the way God has revealed. Then it becomes something we do. Well, I've applied for membership. I attend this school. I do these things in order to be a member of God's family. He says, no, that's not it at all. 
No, the truth is there's only one way to be a part of God's family, and it's according to the promise. There's only one way to be a part of that family, and it's by faith in Jesus. You know who your Savior is. He's the one who revealed himself to be the one to live perfectly for you. For all the times that we hang our hat on our membership. Mom and dad were Christians, and so therefore, I must be a Christian. Mom and dad were sure of eternal life, therefore, I must be sure of eternal life. God revealed his Savior, his son Jesus, went to the cross to face the punishment for those sins. For every time we overthink ourselves into being God's family, for all the times we look at those bloodlines, look at those connections, when they're not connected to Christ, Jesus rose to give us the assurance that those sins have been gone and paid for. He gives us that assurance that we are now his children. We are now a part of his kingdom. What is it that connects us to Jesus? What is it that latches on to all that he has done for us? It's not good choices. It's not bloodlines. It's not church membership. It's faith. It's trusting that what Jesus did, he did for me. What Jesus did, he did for you. Remember, it all hangs on the promise. God said, I'm going to send a son to be the Messiah. I'm going to send a son, my son to be the Savior. And he did. I'm going to send a, my Savior to take away your sin. And he has. I'm going to send my son to give you the assurance of heaven. And he does. Family reunions are a great thing. A time to reconnect with people. Well, you and I, we're part of a better family, a greater family than even any one of us bears the last name because we are part of God's family. We are part of that family by faith. But you know, God says, I still got more room. I still have more room for that family reunion. So tell people. Tell people about Jesus, whether it's your own family members who need to hear it or your close friends who do not yet believe, or it's the stranger on the street. Tell more people so that that family reunion in heaven can be filled. So that heaven doesn't have an empty space, but you can see people from east and west and north and south filling God's kingdom, worshiping him for eternity. You won't get t-shirts for this family reunion. You get something better. You get the robes of righteousness purchased for you by Jesus. And that makes you a part of that salvation nation that he has chosen. Amen. Please rise.